They were a song called it, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. And it was a big hit in 1987 and reached the Billboard's Hot 100 and also the Europe uh, tops list of the ranking of the best songs of the pop songs in, in the world. This song became the, the top song of the album, The Joshua Tree, The Joshua Tree. And it, it was an inspired song for many groups in America and for American music too. I'm still having found what I'm looking for. And it also exhibits influence from gospel music. And its lyric describes spiritual learning. The lyrics that we see in this, this song it looks like a prayer. Looks like a desire of the heart of someone who are looking desperately for God but doesn't know where he is or how to find him. And it's interesting what it says the leader here. I climbed the highest mountain. I have run through the, the fields only to be with you. I have run, I have crawled, I have scaled the city walls only to be with you. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. The second verse said, I have keys on the leaves. I felt the hill in the fingertips and burned it like fire. It was burning inside her. I have spoken with the tons of angels. I have held the hands of the devil. I was, it was war in the night and was cold as a stone, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. In other words, this person who writes this song, he was trying to do everything in order to find happiness, trying to, to, t to take everything in order to find the reason for his life. Now, this is something new for you, or you hear something like this before. Actually, you read the book of Ecclesiastics. You will find a person who did the same sin and who say the same words. I'm talking about Solomon, the, one, the most wise king in the history of the people of Israel. And as the Bible says, well, they were in, as wiser as him in this world and won't be a wiser as him in this world. And he wrote all the prophets that we know today in, from the Bible. And he himself tried to find in serving, in trying to perform a, a, a career or trying to, to be in contact with nature or even try to experience all the pleasures of the war, he couldn't find what he was looking for. He declared everything is the same. What it was, it will be. And what it will be is what we have today. But the, what catch me in my attention of this song after years, because I was a fan of you too, and I never pay attention to the lyrics. I was singing the song, and many Jews people these days, and many Korean people, they, they follow the K-pops today without thinking what they are singing or where, where, they are, where they're doing, or who are they are, the singers. Now, after many years, I pay attention to what the lyrics says, and this says in verse 3, I believe in the kingdom come. Hmm. Interesting, right? Because our thing this year is, let your kingdom come. Then all the colors will be into one, bleeding into one, but yes, I'm still running. You broke the bonds and you lost the chains. Carrier, the cross of my shame. Now, this writer is talking about who? Who is carrying the cross for him? Oh, my shame. You know I believe it. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. This is a person that he knows there's a God. He knows that there's a Savior who died on the cross according to history, according to the Bible, according to the, the generations that were before us. But he didn't have a, a, a personal encounter with him, with the Savior, the one who was crucified. So that why he is still having found what he's looking for. He's looking for the real God, the God who is alive. Not the God that is dead. God's not dead. God is alive. And it's interesting that many people think that God is dead. Because they couldn't find him in their life. They couldn't find him in their life of other people. And they couldn't find him in their life of Christians. And they couldn't find him in church too. And that's why they are wondering and wondering and wondering and wondering. And they are still having found what they are looking for. I believe that today God has brought us here to understand that we are part of this plan. To bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, to let God's kingdom come as we are sure, show through our life, show to our fellowship, show through our ministry that God is real, that God is alive, and his kingdom is here, available at the hand of everyone who wants to come to the Lord. The time has come. The kingdom of God is near. We just need to repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. 
Yes, we continue in the study of the Beatitudes today, and we go over and over to <clears throat> this study to know that we are climbing out to the presence of God, climbing out to, to be more like Him as we are just going through the stairs to heaven. So in this climbing up, to go to the, to the holiness, the presence of God in eternity, we are here, still in this world, to become more like Jesus, to be more like Him. If God wants just to save you, He will save you today and kill you tonight. But since he, you are still here, He has a plan for you. And His plan is that you will show to the world that He is alive in you. And how He is alive in you as you are in the process of transformation to become more like Jesus. And that process is starting with just having faith in Him. Just repenting of your sin. And submit your life in obedience. To be filled with His Holy Spirit. To go into the process of, of, of sanctification. To be more like Jesus. And see God every day in your life. Share the gospel and to endure the conflicts, the challenges, and the persecution that you will be exposed just for being faithful to his words. Now, this word, righteousness, that the Bible said, blessed are those who are hungry or hunger and thirst for righteousness, because they will be filled, said the Bible. So what is this word righteousness? I mean, we are thirsty and, and hungry for something, but thirsty and hungry for righteousness. How, how we define this? Well, the Bible tells about God is righteousness. They tell that the people were righteous, like, like Noah, Abraham, they were righteous. David, they were righteous before Saul. And many people in the New Testament also, the Apostle Paul, they say that we are righteous. But what is the, the word righteousness here? The word righteousness in the Bible dictionary means nothing else than being right with God. Being right with God. Now, are you right with God? John Stott, in his book of the study of the Mount, the Sermon of the Mount, he says, all the trouble in the world today is due to the fact that man is not right with God. For it is because he is not right with God that he has gone wrong everywhere else. He continues saying, the desire for righteousness is a desire to be right with God. A desire to get rid of sin because sin is that which comes between us and God. So righteousness is to be right with God. And we are right with God if we are looking and pursuing God every day. And as you pursue God and you're looking and searching for God, you will find out that you are a sinner. And the problem is that many people, when they find out that they are sinners, instead of pursuing and running after God, they run away from God. Because God is so holy and we see that we are sinners. And we see ourselves with no hope. And we wonder, wonder, and wonder, and wonder, and we are still looking for things that we need it, but we don't want to accept it sometimes in our life. People know about God, and people know that there is a God, but they don't want to accept the truth that God is available. That is only just a step of a prayer that separates us from God. It's just one confession that separates us from God. It's just confessing that we are sinners and that we need a, forgive, a, a saver and we need God's forgiveness that will make able for us to be close to Him. But until we don't do that step of repentance, what the Bible is called as repentance, then we are still separated from God and we are still looking for, and we are still having fun what we are looking for. Be hungry and thirsty of righteousness means the desire to be free from the very desire for sin. And this is what we are struggling with today. Because you are probably a Christian, a good Christian who wants to worship God and honor God with, and obey God with all your heart, with all your strength. But you find out that you are still committing sins, even though that you recognize God as your Savior. And probably that's what the reason this third verse of this song comes from. Because you will say, yes, I know that you carry the cross of my shame. Then my shame that I believe you carry for me. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. We know that, yes, there are still things in our, in our souls, in our hearts, that we cannot read away from it. We want to worship God, but our, in our mind, but our flesh is leading us to commit sin again, over and over. And intentionally, we know we are sinning, and we cannot get away from this desire to sin against God, even though we know that this will, this, this will affect our relationship with God, and it will bring punishment to us if we disobey God. But we don't have that power 
to cast away this desire of sin against God. John Stott will say, we need to have a desire to be free from this desire of sin. The Bible says that no one is righteous, that even no single person. So if no one is righteous, because all of us are sinners, then who can be righteous? And how can we pursue for righteousness? How can we thirsty and hungry for righteousness? No one is righteous. The Bible will say that it's not our righteousness. It's not that we want to make ourselves righteous, but it's God who made us righteous. You cannot be righteous in your own eyes. But you say, but pastor, I'm better than many people in this world. I agree with you. I agree with you that you are better than many people in this world, and probably you are a thousand times better than me. But that doesn't mean that you are righteous. Because if you have someone who is with a more righteous standard in their hearts, in front of you, they will judge you, truth or by their righteousness. We are righteous not because we ourselves make righteous. We are righteous because God made us righteous. We just need to accept by faith what God has done for us. Romans chapter 3, 22, 23 said, The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have seen it and all for show of the glory of God. But the good news is that God makes us righteous if we believe. Titus chapter 3, 5, 6 says, He saved us not because of righteous things we have done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and reward, renewal by the Holy Spirit, who He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So you cannot make righteous yourself. It's God who made you righteous, and that's why we call us saints. We call us holy, holy nation. We are praising in, 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 in the in God's ministry, in God's church, in, in, God, in front of God's people. Why? Because God made us righteous. We don't make righteous ourselves. We just present ourselves as people hungry and thirsty of His righteousness. People who are poor in the spirit. People who, who cry for their sinful natures. And who are in obedience meet before God. God made us righteous. And that's why the Bible declares that we are God's righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 said, God made him who have no sin to be sin for us. So that in him, that means in Jesus Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. Somebody has to say amen for this. We have become righteousness of God. So God, when God sees you through faith, through faith in Jesus Christ, he won't see you as a sinner. He'll see you as a righteous person. Like he saw Noah, Abraham, David, and all these people in the Bible that you will find that they God declared righteous. Not because what they have done, but because what God had done for them. I don't know how many sins you committed last week. Myself, many that I cannot list. But something that brought me back here and, and, and let me stand that before you is not what I have done, but is what God has done for me. Even though I know I'm a sinner, God Again and again, declare me that I'm righteousness in Him. It is His grace. It's His Spirit that convinces us that, yes, we still have hope. We still have another opportunity to repent and come back to God. But you will say, but pastor, that's hypocrite. How can you sin and, and, and ask God for forgiveness and the next day you sin again and knowing that you are going to commit the same sin again, you come back in forgiveness and ask God again for, for His favor and His blessing? That's, that's hypocrisy. You may sing like that, if you don't have the Holy Spirit. But when you have the Holy Spirit, you know that nothing can make you righteous. No moral conscience, no moral standard of this law, no moral law in this world that make you righteous, but only the declaration that God has forgiven all your sins. That is grace. That is what grace is all about. Now, what are you hungry? And what are you thirsty for? What direction do you go in order to fill your hunger, in order to fill your thirst? Because people in this world, they make many things in order to fill their hunger and thirst. 
Many people are hungry of money, thirsty of money, thirsty of, of fame, thirsty of pleasures, hungry for all these things that tempt our flesh. Where we go? Whatever you do in order to fill your thirst and your hunger, thou will lead you to the place you will find out that you need a savior. You need someone who can fill your life. Why? Because all these things that you are looking for are temporarily. But if you are looking for righteousness, if you are thirsty and hungry for righteousness, the promise of God is that you will be filled. Because there is a hole, empty hole in you if you are not living by faith and you are not in communion with God. God created the people to have a body, to have a soul, a spirit. But if we are not living in communion with God, we are separated because no one is righteous and all have seen it. We are living without God. So this soul, spirit, is empty of God's righteousness, God's blessing, God's happiness. And we try to fill this hole with money, pleasures, sports, studies, whatever we are pursuing in this world. But you will find out that even though you get that, that you're looking for, you will still thirsty and hungry for more. Yes, we need to have an appetite, spiritual appetite to maintain our hunger and thirst for righteousness, for God, not for ourselves. How you maintain your spiritual righteousness? How you maintain to your spiritual appetite? Thirsty and hungry for God. Rewarding, give us five practical things to maintain our spiritual appetites. And he says, first things, remind yourself how much God loves you. Remind yourself how much God loves you. Second, he said, stop filling up on junk food. That means temporary sins, pleasures relationships that will for a moment fill your heart and your soul but then the next morning you will feel empty again third make knowing God your first goal fourth get into God's war every day and finally join a small group for support especially this last point because if you have a, a group that are thirsty and hungry for money then they want to leave you to just Look for money. Pursue for money. If you are, you are joining a group, a club, or, or a fellowship that are looking for fame, then you're going to go to that way. If you are looking for people who are just intellectual, they, they, they love to study, they love to, to, to be called scholars, then you will follow those groups. But if you are looking for people who are thirsty and hungry for God, then you will find out the feeling of your thirsty and hung, thirst and hungry. Do you have satisfaction in your life? Today I'm very inspired about pop songs. So I will introduce another song. The first song was, I still can't, haven't found what I'm looking for. The second one, I said, stare to heaven. The third song I want to introduce to you is, I can get no satisfaction. And this was an, an, a song that was popular in the 80s too. The Rolling Stone. I don't know if you heard about the Rolling Stone. When I was a teenager, it was another song that was popular. And I want to play this song today because is no proper for this place. But let's see what the lyric says. I can get no satisfaction. These lyrics are giving reference of frustration and commercialization. Frustration in the flesh and commercialization in, the, in, the, in, in people's life. And he says that I can get no satisfaction because I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried. I can't get no, I can't get no. People, this day they try to satisfy their life just living the moment. Just live in the day. Go all the pleasures of this world. Go around this world for, for what they are hungry and thirsty for. What brings you satisfaction? Because even though you try like this Rolling Stone, they were famous for being doing bad sins. I mean, when I say bad sins, I mean sins that are not right in God's eyes. Pleasures of sex, drugs, addictions. Mick Jagger was a singer of this band. And they have this famous symbol of the, the Rolling Stone, the, the tongue of, out of the mouth. John Piper who said, Sing is what we do when our hearts are not satisfied with God. 
God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. Where is real satisfaction in our life? Why we are not satisfied? Because there is sin between God and us. And we are still haven't found what we are looking for. But when we glorify God, when we spend time with Him, when we serve Him, then we have satisfaction in our life. Isaiah, the prophets, invite us to come, to be satisfied in our life. Satisfied, Isaiah 52, 1, 2 says, Come all who, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat, come, buy wine and meal without money and without cause. Why spend money on what is no bread? And you labor on what does not satisfy. Listen. Listen to me. And eat what is good. And your soul will delight in the riches of fair. Listen what the Bible said. Listen what the spirit of prophecy said to all of us. Come. Those who are thirsty and hungry in this life. Why do you spend so much money in sins that they are not satisfying you? And that's what we are doing. Spending so much money in sin that are not eternal, are just temporarily. And we are trying to get more and more and more, and we are still hungry and thirsty for more. You can ask to all the richest people in the world. They are not satisfied. How we can satisfy our thirst and hunger? Looking and pursuing and seeking for righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that you are looking for will be added to you. All these things that are not satisfied in you will be satisfied in it. Because now you have the righteousness of God. Why? Because the Bible said, For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good sins. Psalms 107 verse 9. So, how can we sat be satisfied? How can we count our thirst and hungry of God? God's righteousness. Just becoming more like Jesus. Be more like Jesus. Do you want to be more like him? Do you want to be more like Jesus? That's the only way you can satisfy your thirst and hunger in your life. Serve others. Pray for others. Keep knowing God more. That's the only way that will satisfy your life. I guarantee you. But it doesn't mean that you will be fill it one for all. The feeling of God is renewing every day. He, if you feel hungry and thirsty of God, it means that you are in the right way. He wants you to be more close to Him. He wants to draw you back to Him and become more like Him and spend more time like Him because if you spend more time like, with Jesus, you will be more like Him. Jesus said, come to me to eat and to drink because He is the real food. He is the real living water. John 6, 35 said, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Come to him, and you're never going to be hungry. Know him. Believe in him, and you're never going to be thirsty again. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in his offering? It is time for you to come to him, to believe in him, and to feel the emptiness of your heart. And I'm sure that you will find what you are looking for in Jesus' name. Let's pray.